Super Mobile. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Drake Hawkins, and we're going to be starting a series on Dwarf Fortress. A uh, fantastic game. I have uh, watched it over the last decade and a bit since I believe it was Quill 18 and Das Tactic. Uh, had a different slight name there but back in the day when Das uh, introduced me to it. And fantastic game. It's a, um, it's a game that almost everybody has never played, but almost everybody that has played a game has played a game that was inspired by it. I guess that's the best way I can describe it. <clears throat> We're going to be starting from a world that I already uh, produced, already um, built, but normally you would go with the create uh, a new world and you get these, uh, by now, for many of you, fairly familiar settings. I believe we went uh, something like sparse, minerals on this one. I don't 100% remember, but that's neither here nor there because we're we're here to uh, enjoy what um, what Dwarf Fortress does best, what Tarn says Dwarf Fortress was built for. That is stories. And uh, I think the game has created a very interesting story for us. Let's go to uh, region 16 here. Um, and uh, we're going to have a look at... Uh, we're going to start by looking at the world. And then I'm going to back out and we're going to come back in. We're going to physically look at the map. They're going to come back in and we're going to look at the um, at the Legends mode, which usually you don't mess with early on. So we'll hit Fortress mode. And it's going to um, progress. It's, fa it's founded the world at this point. We're in the year of gr uh, the year of 100 in uh, the, pro uh, the month of Granite. And uh, skipping a tutorial here, that's fine. And this is our lovely world. So... Uh, if we can, we can pan around with the middle mouse button here. We could use WASD to do it as well. We've got some lovely mirthful behavior going on here. What's this? Joyous wilds and some beautiful wild, uh, lovely, uh, very elvish territory. If we look these little kind of tufts, it's really hard to see, but these spaces are uh, red here because they're they're not red because they're evil. They're red because they're occupied and unavailable. Uh, likewise, up in here, we've got the opposite, which is a terrifying, a massively terrifying biome up here and some more terrifying lands through here. There, There is, uh, I believe this continent is fully connected top and bottom, yes? Oh no, this, this little quadrant over here is separate. We got some humans living off here. We can see uh, on the west here. This is, I believe, this is all the one faction, isn't it? Um, this might be. Where is this civilization? Uh, this is the Gilded Plain, Recluse Continent. Uh, I'm not sure if this tells the name of each group. This is a human hamlet. It's not telling me the name of the human hamlet, is it? I guess not. Uh, but this is all human. A bunch of humans live on this continent. They're mostly unaware of the evils of the world, except for this crazy spot right up here, which is a terrifying uh, human tower. It's a necromancer tower, if I understand it correctly. Uh, if we're panning across the map here, we got some northern deserts in here, and then we got a big old island up here again that is heavily populated by those prolific humans. Uh, but that's it. It's just humans up here. I don't think they have any competitors. They are, you know, the land across the sea to the north. Another one over here. It's a weird world we've got generated here. We've got the uh, little icy stuff down here. Coming down onto our actual continent, all of this is land connected. And we find here the first uh, of our of the dwarven kingdoms in the area. We can actually choose the origin civilization here. And it's going to let us choose which civilization we're going to start with. It'll give you some details about the population. And it'll give you some details about the number of sites, and it'll highlight them in blue to show you the civilization's uh, current sites that exist. And uh, the Salve of Gold, I believe, is... No, not that one. Which one is it? Uh, right up here. The Fated Citadel, up in the north. That's what we were seeing there. That's those people. Another human uh, community around there. Come down to the mischievous channel. They're in kind of this middling, southern middle area here. They're actually relatively close to... This is the volcano here more on that later and then there's the salve of gold which is kind of a smaller group 930 or so dwarves uh king burr spears uh shocked is the leader with 14 sites not bad the salve of gold not sure the name it's interesting and then we got this weird palace of stabilizing and i'd really like to know more about what happened to the palace of stabilizing the palace of stabilizing is uh led by queen Aiden sealpine and it is a population of 71 and one site. Whereas these have like 1,700 approximately, 2,200, 93, it's 71. So let's find out more about that. 
that civilization. We could hit the reclaim button here, and there are three sites we're able to reclaim, I think. Yeah, three sites. Reclaim Fashregoth. This is a former site of... Uh, in 59, the illustrious crypt of the Salve of Gold founded a parched crafted. In the early spring of 89, 30 years later, the forgotten beast Exus Depth Flight, the Furious, routed the luscious, the lustrous, sorry, the lustrous crypts of the Salve of Gold and destroyed the, the place. So we could go in there, a forgotten beast ripped that place apart. Up here, we have another site that is reclaimable at Embark. So this is right when the game finishes its hundred years uh, generation. So we're right at the beginning here. In year one, the inky crypts of the fated citadel founded the floor uh, floor learns uh in the early spring of 26 the forgotten beast color paddle lie and the ruth the, the ruthless the ruthless squids are routed the inky crypts in the fatal citadel and destroyed the place so we could reclaim that one there's also one here which we'll learn more about in just a moment wheel uh wheels pleaded that's right, up here. That was originally the mountain home of the uh, faction that we are actually going to have a look at. Uh, the Orifier of the Palace of Stability, which is the faction, the, the kingdom, the empire, um, founded Wheels Pleaded. Uh, in early winter 22, the Forgotten Beast again. Uh, Alu Wash Noisen. Wash, wash Moisen, sorry. Uh, the Ocean of Ships routed the Ore of Fire. Well, ship, an ocean of ships might do that. Uh, in, in the palace of stabilizing the, the, and destroyed the place. So let's have a have a backtrack here just a little. Uh, this is the location right in here. It's in the mountains. It's interesting. And this is the only lasting homeland that exists to this day of the... Where is it? Glazed Fainted? Or is it... I think it's the top one here. I think it's Glazed Fainted. This one. So the, they basically founded a number of faction spots down the area, and uh, and then we've got a, a tomb over here, a big old tomb, which is just a whole bunch of a whole bunch of sadness has happened. There's a, they're surrounded at a distance, kind of looking in on the mountain as the civilizations of humans around here. So let's back things up a little and return to the title screen, where we can go back into this world uh, again, region sixteen. It's called the diminishing the the diminish of dawning. Uh, the, sorry, Dimension of Dawning. Uh, the world is Kar Kodor. And uh, Kar Kodor is the world we're going to be starting in. Uh, but I'm taking the extra time because this game is phenomenally about story. And the story that these guys project, that this game projects on me, is one of... I don't know, it... it Maybe it's it, it pulled on me at me, but Legends mode allows us to go into this weird this weird chart which is dumb of course but what i want to do is come down to the civilizations who wants to look through charts of nonsense numbers and lines of text well apparently a lot of us because it's a very very popular game uh all of a sudden uh we're gonna go down to kosoth norral so all the names are in dwarven it's the palace of stabilizing and we can see through the we can read through the brief uh, topical history. So only major points that happened in the civilization are listed here, but uh, the dwarf Saxul Ringhelms became the general, and then we've got a uh, another person becoming the outpost liaison and the diplomat, and here it's pointing to the king. The first king of the Palace of Stabilizing in, is Aiton Spearbold in the year one, right? So this is the founding of the place, and they founded in Wheel Spleeded. Wheels Pleated was the founding settlement of the Palace of Stabilizing. So our goal in a series of attempts is going to be to restabilize the Palace of Stabilizing, rebuild the Empire, and bring it back to its former glory by going far away, starting in a different fact, um, a different uh, fortress, rising it to prominence and strength, and allowing it to feed strength back into the Palace of Stabilizing. Or we're going to get eaten by a forgotten beast because that's running with the theme. Let's continue on. Early in the winter, pal of the palace held, held a uh, uh, poetic strategy, uh, a recital of poetic strategy. Like they're, they're they're reciting, they're telling us of the important recitals of poetry. Um, held a ceremony, and then uh, the dwarf Fath uh, became the baroness. Fath squirreled coal became baroness there, and then we the. Uh, uh, 
uh, Palace of Stability, the POS. I just realized that's hilarious. That's the cho chosen empire. We chose POS as an empire. It's 71 population at year 100, and we're going to be dumb and taken anyways. Uh, Confederacy of um, Pastimes swore a support to support glittery nations in the war if later did uh, likewise. So basically, they're forming alliances as they go, and then they get this next thing. They founded Glazed Fainted, and then they founded Matched uh constructs so clearly they're starting by eight and nine years in they're starting to do well and then midwinter nine and it all begins the the downfall begins the cyclops asks us uh larger renown large renown the day of uh what is this scintillating the day of scintillating became the enemy of the pos <coughs> the dwarf Aiden paddle poster became a baron the forgotten beast vesh gual lace became an enemy and then Jaguar became an enemy. And then they did, uh, they founded Squash Barons. So that's now uh, four cities they've got doing pretty good, except for the, you know, taking off the crazy beasts and stuff, digging a bit greedily and deeply, like dwarves tend to do. Uh, the dwarf Cyril, uh, Dagger Hill, uh, began embezzling funds as the, as the outpost liaison. We got to watch for that guy if he's still around. Um, <coughs> and they can be. It was only in 16, so they lived to like 150, 170 years. Uh, several groups, including the POS, uh, supported a, uh, another alliance and a, an extending alliance again. It's just forming all these alliances. Now, this is with actually, if we look deeper, we find out this is with humans. Uh, they're forming all these local human alliances, which is great. Uh, the palace state, they, they don't need a bunch of other sentient races attacking them. They've got troubles of their own. The POS... Uh, attacked the profane monster the field of in the field of myth the dwarf saxel uh, ringhelm we saw him again as the general um the initial general in year one led the attack to, and, and the defender uh, were led by the goblin bax uh twinkle plague the dwarf necromancer just to throw this little detail in there, the dwarf necromancer feb worked copper became the baroness of the palace of stabilizing Oh, just 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 happened to take a necromancer on as a as a baroness, so that's perfectly safe. Um, and then uh, a, another attack. This one on uh, Pictic. Pictic. It was awesome. Uh, then they pillaged Pictic, and then the Forgotten Beast became an enemy again. And then this one in twenty. Not only the Forgotten Beast, they now have a dragon, a dragon named Ostra Parched Linked uh, Lick Lickers. Sorry, Parched Lickers, the Jade, uh, routed the dimpled basement in the POS and destroyed squash banners. So the fourth one they found it had a dragon attack it. And then the dwarf, uh, Volker Bean Laced, uh, became a baron. And then we got another um, enemy, another giant cheetah. Seems minor after a dragon and three two forgotten beasts are, are on your tail. Uh, POS and the Profane Monster, and uh, again, another attack, another battle. So their their alliances are calling in uh, favors now. And then a Hydra became an enemy. Like, just keep going, guys. It's working great. There's uh, there's Alu Washmoisen, the Forgotten Beast Alu Washmoisen, which we saw before, right? Did we see this one already? I think we saw this one. Uh... No, we didn't. There we go. Okay, so this wasn't uh, became an enemy. Um routed ores of fire and the pos and destroyed wheels fleeted in 22 this empire lasted the first 22 years before it had its mountain home obliterated and then of course you go through the new appointments of the new people including dastus belgray who's the new king i'm gonna guess that uh our old friend uh Aiton spearbold was probably uh in the valiant defense of wheels fleeted and and didn't do so fair and then we got dingo uh, enemies and more dingo enemies and a hydra uh, comes up at the uh, radiant tower and the pos and destroys match structures so now we've got match structures wheels pleated and squash baron the four that they had founded all obliterated seems like the attacks on the goblins was not exactly their primary uh, risk factor and then we've got diplomats and more politicians and more political intrigue and all the rest. We don't see that necromancer come back. Several groups uh, form, later did uh, likewise, forming uh, unions and alliances. Uh, and then we get down in late year 80, the profane monster defeated Sem uh, Semitic ropes, the palace of, and pillaged, pillaged 
Blazed fainted. So we've now got everything that has been hit, except for Glaze fainted, destroyed, and Glaze fainted has now been pillaged in 80. So no wonder they've got just about nothing left. I'm surprised we even have a story left to tell of them in uh, in year 100. And then at 81, they replace them and nothing is told again of them. That's how small they got after getting raided there. Basically, the enemy forgot they even existed and the historians stopped writing. Until uh, mid-autumn 94, uh, they swore to support another alliance. That's it. And then it fades into nothingness for another six years until now. And that's where we're going to continue because we are going to be setting up a um, a fortress here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the details of where we're going to be picking our fortress, why and what we're going to be doing. And then I'm going to jump in in the next episode. We're going to actually be, uh, be landing with our embark with our friends. Now, these are going to be longer episodes than than probably the 20, 30 minutes this one is, but we'll see how long it, how long it takes. But I wanted to, uh, to tell the backstory of uh of pos of uh, yes <laughs> of the palace of stabilizing and uh, see if we can uh take on an absurd challenge and the absurd challenge is going to take some absurd measures like we're not going to be just settling next door and trying to fight off a forgotten beast immediately that might be just fun and boring we're going to go try to uh, um basically the seven of us dwarves you start with seven dwarves we're going to head down southeast here and uh, looking for help, most likely, looking for help with our uh, uh, our fellow dwarves in the south here, uh, the mischievous channels, without finding great uh, support from them. Just uh, a pat on the back and a, and a wink saying, sure, you have fun down there and keep moving on. Uh, stay out of our lands. And uh, we passed through their territory. We passed through the forest and along the shores. We ended up coming out here and uh, we're finding ourselves uh, some very interesting stuff here. We've got some humans developed down here past south of the dwarves and, and a spattering of elves and uh, there's a bit of dwarven or a terrifying yucky activity down here. We got a bunch of terrifying stuff off in the mountain we're told to stay clear of and up north is a, uh, a bunch of goblin activity. Now are we going to be safe from goblins? I'm not sure. This area shows that we are at war with goblins but it's two days travel so they would they would take a bit to get here. What we're going to be doing is embarking in a volcano today. And the volcano we're looking for is oddly named the Godly Fire. Okay, uh, let's have let's have a click in here. We left click and we go into here, and uh, there's the volcano itself. The nearest water body is uh, a cloud cooked, the Idol Phantom, or this one over here. So neither of these are going to be in our embark because we're not going to go that big. Um, embarks are basically by default they're a four by four space, and uh, something I will point out, and I I mean this needs to be. This needs to be something that is described to everyone. There needs to be some sort of notice here. When you're mousing over something, you notice how I come to the corner of this river and I see the stream? Watch if I move one tile south. The whole square, 4x4, four four, moves one tile south. Everything changes. We're no longer apparently at a river. However, if I go over here, we're clearly still covering that river. And it's not showing up with that stream. And it's not showing up. The tiles, these are. this is a 4x4 four four square. So if I drop this down to 1... I'm only looking at that one tile. Even when I'm showing a 10 by 10 or I think the biggest you can do is 16 by 16. I don't know if you can do that in this format. I think you need to do some some uh, um, some fancy playing in the uh, in the background to get it that big. But you used to be anyways. Um, but if I look over here, there's a volcano. And obviously, if I embark here, the volcano is going to be in the middle, but it's not going to tell me that. So that doesn't matter if you can see that it's a river or a volcano. But when you're looking at the the minerals, for instance, up in this top corner, there's heavily forested and thick vegetation, untamed wilds through here, right? However, and down in this bottom left corner, which is, you know, this is um, right down here. I'm now mousing over the bottom, the southwest corner of what would be our 4x4. Four four. So there's a little bit of sand little bit of soil. There's gold and silver and copper and nickel and lead. There's no iron there. But there is flexstone, so that's okay. And then over in the actual tile that has the volcano, there's iron. And we got a little to the east of it. So we got we got iron to the east of the map. Uh, east sort of central of our of our embark. I think we got like what four we got four tiles that have five maybe that have iron here. Six. Yeah, six uh, top right six tiles have iron. So if we're here, and then we go uh, right here, and then 
two, three. Yeah, this is the cor top corner I want to do. Right there is the embark we got to go for. So what this is going to give us is a volcano with some forest to the south, some forest to the northeast. Uh, it looks like a fairly stiff mountain peak on the west. And I've seen only a little bit of this place, but we do have a, a volcano in the middle and, uh, and some pretty high mountains in here. So if we hit confirm to embark here, it's going to let us go in to uh, choose who we bring with us. And the group I'm going to be bringing with us is the Gebsodol, and that's a save profile for the group that we actually have. Uh, all the standard settings are are not, I did not mess with any other custom settings, but if you do prepare carefully, you get to choose these dwarves, sort of. And I, very big air quotes on this. If you reload up this map, if I escaped right now and I came back and I started on this exact spot and I hit pre -care, prepare carefully, I would get entirely different dwarves. They're fully randomized characters here that don't exist anywhere else in the world. So Tullet Rushgur Duk Duk, uh, the peasant, uh, attack clasp, clasp, does not have a history. He's born today. He exists today with six friends and a deity. No family, no nothing. So these seven spawn and the characters they spawn with spawn randomly. So when you're going through and choosing your skills and you save your profiles, Come back in and reconsider if you're loading up the profile because if you made this guy for instance uh here's let's find an example um low willpower maybe low stamina impatient poor focus bad with words weak here's a great example tossed alathesis this guy right here tossed is uh uh, he's considered weak, which means he's going to have a heck of a time moving when he's carrying heavy weights. So if I had my seventh person in my profile set as my, uh, not as my miner, that'd be fine because miners don't need to carry the rock. They just smash it out of the wall. Uh, like a, uh, a stone crafter, for instance, he will, he would have to walk over and pick up the rock and bring it back to his, his place. You got to be aware of that because the characters and all of their stats change when you reload. So uh, at this point, what we're going to do is return to the map again. All right, so we're loading in here on uh, the save of day one. We basically just got embarked, and I think it's... I don't even think I've unpaused at this point. I think I've not unpaused at this point. Maybe true, maybe not. All right, so we see the overhead mini-map on the top right. We're at elevation 49, looking at some flat ground. I'm going to zoom out, holding control and uh, wheel mouse. Oh, I did set some stuff. I did start planning at this point. So here we are. Here is our crew. And uh, we're going to have a look at them. Before we get started on anything, we're going to have a, uh, uh, a quick look over, um, again, just to show we are still on the same world. That is right here. The world map and we our home is our hometown is right here it's the only one in blue which means it's the only ally or only reference we've got left uh to our own civilization 71 of them approximately 75 but we, it's a really small group and the green is allies of that faction it looks like we have a human hamlet down here that's allied with us and that's it and then we've got like our enemy orc nasty over there we're at war with them yeah, they're not big, but uh, they're probably like necromancers and nasty things. Uh, it is a tower. And this is us on centered on the map here. This yellow right on the volcano here. So our site government is the Dented Shield. And uh, we are of the Palace of Stabilizing Civilization. And this is the Flames of Euphoria. So we will be uh, on Perplexing Point. That's funny. The mountain is called Perplexing Point. Not our volcano, but the actual mountain beside us. And uh, yeah, that's so that's what we get to know about it. Our queen, Aiden, is going to hopefully uh, fend off with all her alliance, fend off any more destruction, and maybe stop digging for long enough for us to get ourselves dug in and get a civilization here. Let's have a moment to look through our crew. We've got Unid, Unib, sorry, Olin, and Moses, uh, who are all mining right now. We've got actually two Moseses, which is a little weird, um, but I didn't notice that when it started up, but... Uh, we've got our expedition leader, uh, Ked Kosos, Konos, Ked Konos, there we go. Uh, Moses Ked Konos. We'll have a look at uh, Moses here. Uh, 70, 77-year-old male. He's an adequate engraver, adequate uh, appraiser, organizer, and bookkeeper. So he'll be he'll lead things from the uh, management perspective to begin with and uh, polish up the walls and make them look fancy if we ever get survive long enough to get to that. We'll probably find a forgotten beast like two years in, which is the standard for our... Uh, 
our uh, civilization, I think. Values fairness, good memory, and good analytical ability. Easily stress tolerant and dutiful. And uh, we've got some uh, information on other things. So he's got adequate negotiator and adequate judge of intent to help him out with the, uh, the negotiations and such. Apparently he's also a dancer. He did that one on his own. And uh, he knows the butterfly of styling. Must have picked it up on the trip. And uh, so that's, this is part of our crew here. Let's have a look. We also have, so we have three miners here. Each of them has a more important skill, like metal crafter. And uh, Olin is our weaponsmith. We're going to be heavily focused on trying to get established inside using the volcano as a, for, a source of uh, fuel and power to feed a industrial machine to rebirth the empire of POS. Gotta stop calling it that. Uh, we have uh, Sarvesh, who's going to be very busy as a furnace operator and blacksmith. So blacksmith is the one that does um, furnishings and pedestals and statues and things that aren't weapons and armor, basically. Um, or crafts uh, out of metal. And then we have our uh, gem setter, uh, Meng here. Meng is going to be our gem setter and our stone carver. So we'll probably do that for some economics. Carve some some stones into you know crafts or something, and then attach some fancy shiny gems on them and sell them off to people, uh, whoever wants to buy them, so we can boost the economy. And then we have the lifeblood Vebok Mol Moraluz, Page growled, uh, a, a bit of a grumpy, intemperate, um, but uh, poor spatial sense, disdains crafts uh, crafts work and disdains tranquility. Just not a nice. Nice fellow to be around, but at 86, he is a proficient planter, competent brewer, and adequate cook. So you can tell where he's going to be. You don't care, so don't ask. <laughs> that pretty much sums him up. So that's our crew. We do have a couple of war dogs here. Uh, we got a male and a female war dog. Let's look over the animals, because I am a big fan of these an the animals in this game. We do have two stray ewes, or sorry, a ewe and a ram. Uh, we have three sows and a boar. We have uh, two ducks and a drake. We also have a uh, come with, it looks like a two hump camel and a yak, uh, a stray yak bull. I think those will probably end up on the dinner plate at some point. Uh, others, oh, conveniently shows nothing right now, which is nice. All right, and we can set up all sorts of things. I've done a few basics and we've looked a little bit into, into the mountain. Pardon me, I'm gonna have, uh, we're only gonna pan over here and have a look at this one last thing before we, uh, we got some some work planned over there, but we'll we'll look at that. That'll be for later. This is the volcano. Look at it. Look at that. Let's scroll down as we see. Uh, right. If I click this, it'll show us the numbers. No, I shut them off. There we go. The numbers. That's seven seven of of uh, lava. So if we pop up one tile, we can see that we're mousing over here. It says open space. We're going down, 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 down. Uh, oh no. Let's wait. Open space. It's not supposed to say open space like that. Because the lava is right here. Okay, that's weird. Where's the lava end? Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, it's open spaces and there's no no structure in the way. Right. Uh, and at 46, we have just open space. So the lava is actually sitting at level 45. And if you remember, the top floor here isn't even the top floor. There's other ones shallower down. Just about gets dangerously far down uh, at 49. So we're real close, just above it. It's a bit, it's a bit stinky and a bit fun. And we're going to dig our way into this space over here. We're going to flatten out a few things. We're going to dig our way into this space. And if you look at the mini map up here, we're going to zoom our way out here and see that we've got this strange t pillar here of of rock. We'll get into more detail of of my hopeful plans and then sort of a. Uh, a mound here that kind of peaks out in a couple spots. So it's got these like two weird peaks and then this very pyramidic sort of peak right up here, which is lovely. Very exciting. I hope that we get some useful uh, stuff out of this. We're at about half an hour now, which is going to be our, our where we're going to stop this sort of intro uh, uh, episode. And next time we're going to get in and get some work done and get these uh, dwarves moving to get them... Uh, uh, doing some things, hauling some stuff, and getting some things set where we want them to. And uh, if you do like to see uh, the idea of a volcano, or perhaps some more Dwarf Fortress in general, because there's never enough out there, uh, take a moment to hit the like button, and uh, more importantly, come back for the next episode. 
let me know that you're there in the comments and ask questions away. Be f feel free to backseat game. The game's been out for you know uh, a week, a couple weeks now. Um, in on the Steam edition, you know, only 20 years in the making, so it's it's got to be you know got to be a few perks, got to be a few things. There is lots of bugs in it. There's lots of things that aren't complete, but the complexity level dwarfs pun intended, everything else in the in the genre. And I hope you guys stick around for a nice long uh, long series. Uh, my hope is that we can get a lot of story out of this, or we're gonna end up doing the typical Dwarf Fortress thing and make an oops, and I'll like, some, I'll accidentally tell somebody to dig a stair the wrong way and it'll flood the whole place with, with lava. And then our hopes and dreams for all uh, of POS will be a POS. And that's all there'll be to it. So uh, we'll see which fate we come out with. So thank you so much. And for all of us here uh, at the Flames of Euphoria, thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you in game.